hang up der Tag ist Sahne. Ich check die Straßenlage, Frauen schaukeln elegant. Hallo, ich heiße Herr Keuer und willkommen zu Video Nummer 3, Nominativ, Akkusativ und Dativ. Auf Englisch bitte. Before we get into the German, let's try to understand the subject, the direct object and the indirect object in English first. The subject is the part of the sentence doing the action. In German, it's called nominative. The girl runs fast. Auf die Plätze, fertig, los! Girl is the part of the sentence doing the running. The German teacher caught the ball. The teacher was the one doing the catching. The direct object is the part of the sentence receiving the action. In German, it's called accusative. The boy punches the man. The man would be the direct object since the man was the one receiving the punches. The girl kisses her dad. Dad received the kiss, so dad is the direct object. The girl kicks the ball. Ow! Since the ball received the kick, the ball would be the direct object. Another way to think of the direct object is to think caveman talk. That is, pick out the three most important words in the sentence. The third word you pick is going to be the direct object. Here are some examples. The man gives the boy a pencil. Here. Danke schön. The three most important words are man gives pencil. So pencil is the direct object. If you made the mistake of thinking boy was the direct object, it would look like this. Man gives boy. Here. Danke. In our example, obviously the man is giving the pencil and not the boy. How about our next example? The young player destroys the old man. <laughs> yeah, du bist ein loser. The three most important words are player destroys man, so man is the direct object. There is one slight exception. When using the verb to be in English or sein in German, both sides of the verb are treated like the subject. This is because there is no difference in meaning if you were to switch the two parts. You can see that in this example. The man is a doctor. The doctor is a man. See, it means the same thing either way. There is a huge difference, however, between I turn on the computer and the computer turns me on. What's a nice computer like you doing in a place like this? One is a lot more disturbing than the other. The indirect object is the part of the sentence that answers the question to or for whom. In German it's called dativ. In our previous example, the man gives the boy a pencil. Boy would be the indirect object because the pencil is being given to the boy. In our next example, the man buys his wife German food. Wife would be the indirect object because the man is buying the food for his wife. Obviously, the man is not buying his wife, he's buying the food for his wife. Now it's time for the German. Pause the DVD and make a chart like this. As you see and hear the definite articles, fill the chart in. We'll begin with the masculine definite articles. Der Junge spielt Tennis. Ich sehe den Jungen. Ich gebe dem Jungen das Geschenk. Does your chart look like this? Now let's try it with feminine nouns. Ich gebe der Frau das Geschenk. Ich sehe die Frau. Die Frau spielt Tennis. Your chart should look like this. Let's try it with neuter nouns now. Das Mädchen spielt Tennis. Ich sehe das Mädchen. Ich gebe dem Mädchen das Geschenk. Now your chart should look like this. Let's take a look at the plurals now. 
Ich gebe den Kindern die Geschenke. Die Kinder spielen Tennis. Ich sehe die Kinder. And here is the finished chart. With a little bit of practice, you too can master the nominative, accusative, and dative cases in the German language. Vielen Dank und auf Wiedersehen. Doch dann kommt sie, ich bin verloren, bin verliebt über beide Ohren. Ich winke, sie winkt nicht, ich wünschte, ich wäre nie geboren. Ich weiß, ich bin zu... How you doing? How many times do I have to kiss you? That's perfect.